So I'm going to talk about stages of a tropical cyclone or stages of a hurricane. Remember, they mean the same thing. Hurricane is just specific to um, tropical cyclones affecting uh, North America. But this is Hurricane Fran, and um, w you saw a little bit ago that it has to have a minimum uh, central low pressure of, I think it's 980 millibars or less. And right now, Hurricane Fran looks nice and healthy with uh, 954 millibars of pressure with its central low. And boy, can you see these tight, see how tightly packed these isobars are. Those are isobars. And remember what we talked about with tightly packed isobars on a map like this? That means you have very strong wind. Well, the hurricanes uh, in that part of the Atlantic Ocean, uh, they'll do a few things, but they generally go from, um, from east to west. Sometimes they, what we say, recurve, and they kind of do a kind of a swoop-de-loo around the Atlantic Ocean Basin. But you can see how the eye has moved for over the course of time like that. Um, so that was September 5th. On September 6th, it's uh, moved. Ha the eye has continued to move. And now it is here. And actually now the central low pressure is increased. It's not as low as it used to be. It's only 980 millibars instead of 954 millibars. At this point, it was downgraded. And I know you've heard that term before. It was downgraded to, a, to what we call a tropical storm. So, and the reason it, the central low pressure got less, and actually, can you see where the isobars aren't so close together? So the central low, um, excuse me, the central low got higher, I guess you'd say. It's not as intense. And the wind died down. So, and the reason is it doesn't have that, it doesn't have its feeding source. It's nice warm water. So it kind of began to peter out. Um, so there's, generally speaking, three things that a hurricane needs to survive. And one of them, like you heard me say a minute ago, is warm water. So as you might imagine, the closer you are to the equator or the closer you are to the intertropical convergence zone, the warmer that um, your water's going to be. So it takes a little while, remember, for water to, um, to heat up. And once it's warm, it stays warm a long time. So related to that, actually, the warmest water is going to be in late summer, and it's going to continue on till early fall. So where is your warm water? Well, it's within 20 degrees or so of the equator. The other thing, or another thing, though, is you need to get some sort of twist on your large, um, that on your disturbed air. Basically, your, your, your warm moist air that's rising needs to get a twist from something we talked about earlier called the Coriolis force. And the Coriolis force is, is created as the Earth spins on its axis. One of the things I wanted you to know about the Coriolis force is that the closer you are to the equator, basically the Coriolis force peters out. So if you're within five degrees of the equator, even though you might have nice and toasty uh, water, you're not going to have the spin you need in order to get your, um, your weather system to turn into a hurricane. So actually, I brought back up this map. Can you see that there's a wide swatch of no hurricanes right here? Isn't that interesting? And with regard to the first criteria, if you get above like 20 degrees or so, um, well, it's showing even farther than 20 degrees. I guess they form 20 degrees. But if you get too high in elevation, or I should say, I'm sorry, too high in um, latitude, then you're too far from warm waters. So the last thing that we need is basically you need to get that warm, moist air moving up. And kind of related to that then, um, our hurricanes, excuse me, what you'll see if you go back to the slide that I just took away, there it is, is that um, this then translates to we don't generally have hurricanes on the western side of continents. Um, all right. All right. So 
if I were to kind of put, uh, go ahead and talk about the stages of a the formation of hurricanes, specifically tropical cyclones in our neck of the woods, and I'm going to kind of narrow it down to Atlantic hurricanes because they're classic. So Atlantic hurricanes start out as easterly waves. Okay, what I mean by easterly waves here is, um, by the way, you can the hurricanes, our Atlantic hurricanes that we're going to be concerned about. Notice that meteorologists need to go clear over here in the Atlantic Ocean off the, this part of Africa, off the west coast of Africa. Now you need some sort of meridional flow versus zonal flow aloft to get some sort of convergence in your easterly trade winds to go ahead and squeeze that air so it ascends and you get these, uh, that instability causes these um, storms. So then basically there's a group of storms that are going to cross the Atlantic Ocean and may or may not turn, um, turn into a hurricane. So the, actually I don't know if you call if easterly waves is the first step or not, but let's, so let's go ahead and call this maybe 1B. We call this 1A. Kind of related to easterly waves for um, Atlantic hurricanes in our neck of the woods anyway is probably the first stage you recognize, something called a tropical disturbance. Now, it's not a tropical storm, it's a tropical disturbance. And it is not, storms coming up, a disturbance is less intense than a storm. Um, and notice that we've got kind of a set of criteria. In general, um, as long as your wind speed isn't any greater than 39 miles per hour, what you have is what we call a tropical disturbance and they kind of ride in a cluster across the Atlantic Ocean, starting off the west coast of, of Africa. Now, if you're um, less than 39, huh. I don't know, it looks like I'm not, uh, I've got something wrong with my wind speeds here. <laughs> the next stage after you get a tropical disturbance is a tropical depression. Again, I need to check my wind speeds on my slides. I'm not real thrilled with that. Tropical depression should be more intense than a tropical disturbance. And you can kind of see that only one in ten disturbances kind of get the umph or the instability to go ahead and intensify to become a tropical um, depression. Then if your storm goes ahead and intensifies after that, you can from a depression get a tropical storm. Now that name might sound familiar, tropical storm. So this would be step two. After disturbance, you get depression. Step three, after depression, you get storm. Um, now, a few things about, well, I guess I will point out, and again, I need to double check these wind speeds, okay? But if your winds associated with your um, storm are between 39 and 74 miles per hour, then what you have is upgraded to a tropical storm. And at this point, it is kinged. It's got a very important thing happens to these tropical storms. They go ahead and get a name. Okay, they get a name like um, the Boris and I can't think of the girl's name uh, a minute ago. So we name our tropical storms, and our tropical storms may or may not go ahead then int and intensify to become what we call tropical cyclones. So that would be the fourth stage tropical cyclones. So the criteria for becoming a tropical cyclone is, in terms of wind speed, it needs to be equal to or greater than 75 miles per hour. Just keep in mind that um, it goes ahead and it gets a name at the tropical storm stage, and it keeps that name, of course, as it's a tropical cyclone. So how many um, storms ultimately become hurricanes? Well, this first line, this kind of taller line, and down here along the x-axis it's showing you um, time of year, and along the y-axis it's showing you number of storms. The yellow one represents um, tropical it's, um, cyclones or hurricanes and tropical storms. And then this one just represents hurricanes. Remember, synonym for hurricanes is tropical cyclones. Okay, so you kind of get a sense for that.